Well, it's day two of messing around with the bike. And I was able to put my reading glasses on and get a close look at these points. Now, there's a little wire that hooks up right here at the top of the points. Well, it's critical to the operation <laughs> to get the right spark. So here's the old original points, and I have the new points in the bike. What I, where my mistake was, I had placed the uh, wire in the wrong place. It was in between this insulator, and it should have been on the outside here uh, because it was actually grounding out right there in the middle, and that's not where it's supposed to be. So, in order to do that, I, I had to remove the points again because the, the, the clip that goes on to the, the, the wires on there is so short that you can't put it on there with the points in there. I had to take the points out. And then, at that little tiny bolt, it's so tiny, you know, and those, uh, when you got big fingers, it's a challenge. But I went ahead and I got it hooked up on the outside here in between the washer and the lock washer so it's not going to ground out on the center there where I don't want it to. So I got that fixed. This uh, connection on the condenser looks like it's okay. Uh, so I guess the next thing is I can put the flywheel back on, set the points, and see if maybe now I have a spark. Being that my eyesight's not real good, and I got these reading glasses, but getting down there on my hands and knees and trying to focus on that, a little bit of a chore for me. So when I initially put it in, I made an error and didn't even realize it, uh, that I had the wire in the wrong place. But I got it figured out. Thanks to some of the tips from you guys, too. You said, check that wire, make sure it's not grounding out. And I check it, and I'm like... <laughs> Of course, it's grounding out. Before I put this uh, back on, I got a, uh, some acetone on this paper towel. So what I've done is I, I took some steel wool and just kind of made sure there wasn't any rust in here. And now I just got to kind of wipe out and make sure there's no steel wool particles in there. I'll blow it out too, but I just want to wipe it off first, see the, the rust that's coming on there. And just make sure I get this wiped out real good before I put it back on. It's magnetic, so everything sticks to it. Get inside there too. I think the flywheel is pretty clean and uh, ready to go back on. I don't see any residue on there anymore. I might just take the air compressor to it and give it a couple squirts of air just to make sure that it's nice and clean. Okay, now I got my spark plug checker plugged into the spark plug. I pulled the other spark plug out so I wouldn't have any compression. So if I crank it over, that thing should that thing should light up. So I'm going to turn the ignition on and let's just hit this. Oh, look at that! We got an orange spark there. <laughs> I did it. Now we have spark. So we got spark and we got fuel. So if we got the carburation right, this thing should run. I'm pretty ecstatic about that. Well, that was a big success for me today and I'm pretty happy. 
Well, my next task will be to just reassemble everything, put the gas tank back on, hook up the fuel lines, uh, put the uh, side cover back on over that uh, with the shifter linkage. <clears throat> then we can lower it down off of the jack and see if we can get it running. <laughs> Not going to do that today, though. Um, I I was you know I've been working on this this morning for a while. I was pretty successful. I got the points set. I got them. I got the points wired up properly. I got the points set. I put the flywheel back on, and I now have a spark. So, and thanks for those of you who gave me tips on that. You know to check that connection on the points because that was critical. And I just blindly stuck the wire on there last time, tightened the thing up, and didn't even pay attention to which, you know space it was in and it was actually on the ground so I had to move it over onto the outside between the flat washer and the lock washer tighten that up and that <laughs> that's what it needed so excellent well, I'm going to close up the shop right now and it is a windy day out here today the leaves are blown across I used to work with a guy that used to say the leaves are marching because when the wind blows real hard you know all the leaves go scattering down across the the field there <laughs> he said hey the leaves are marching today well the leaves are are marching that's for sure blowing in something I'm sure of that Cats running everywhere. What are you doing sitting in my chair? <laughs> They'd take over if they wanted to. Yesterday was a beautiful day. And I did see some bikes out on the road, but I'm reluctant to take my bike out because the roads are just covered with white salt. And I don't want that salt on my bike. So my brother that has the business uh, with the Christmas lights. Yeah, he's got that really nice big facility that he bought not too long ago. Place is huge. I mean, the, just the one office part, it must have six offices in there. It's got like a lounge area. Uh, it's got like a foyer where you come in, like for guests or whatever. Uh, and it also has a solarium on the one end. Yeah, it. I mean, you could live in this place. It's that nice. Uh, but the garage area is huge, and so what he's been doing is uh, hosting some uh, football parties there. Now, my brother and his friends are fans of the Cleveland Browns, and myself, I'm. I've never really been in this uh, sports, organized sports. Um, you know, I can watch it. Uh, there's some things that I enjoy more than others. Uh, football, I can take it or leave it. I have no uh, dedication to any particular team. Uh, even the Cleveland Browns, if they win or lose, it, it doesn't bother me one bit. It's, it's not worth me getting up in a tither about it. But uh, my brother and his uh co-workers and his family they they love the browns so he's been having these browns football parties whenever there's a, a a good game so yesterday they had a big party there and the browns were playing the uh, cardinals and the browns pretty much slaughtered the cardinals in this game so uh you know it wasn't like I mean, you know, when it's, when the score's that far off, it isn't really a thrilling game. When the score's really close back and forth, that's when everybody's standing up and, yeah, you know, cheering and putting on all the all of the uh, thrills to the <laughs> to the party. But anyway, it, you know, I like going there because it's a social time for me. I get to meet new people. I mean, his coworkers are there and I got to meet some really cool people. And then family, all of his family is there, uh, my brother and his wife and, and my nephews and niece. 
Uh, so it's a lot of fun. And then they have tons of food. Uh, I mean, they had they had grilled ham and cheese sandwiches. Uh, he's got a, like a black stone flat top grill that he cooks on. They did uh, the grilled ham and cheese sandwiches. They had cheeseburgers. They had uh, hot dogs and sausages. They had uh, cheese steak sliders that were oh, out of this world. Um, uh, shrimp cocktail, great big thing of shrimp cocktail. Desserts like pumpkin pie and donuts and, and cake and you know, and then a bunch of other sides too. So I mean, it's just, if you go out of there hungry, something's wrong and you know so that's the thing i like because i like to eat and i go there and it's like woo -hoo, where am i going to start you know i think i'll have one of these tacos to begin with <laughs> it was a lot of fun though and it was like i said it was a great social time for me to be there uh he says my brother said that you know as time goes on and he gets organized in the shop uh he's he's probably going to put up a bigger uh projection screen uh, where they can really bump it up a notch and he can ha host his uh, football parties in there. And not, he doesn't do it every week, but, you know, maybe maybe uh, every other week or something like that he's been doing it. So, uh, and, he, and he just does it during football season. So, uh, anyway, his business is doing real well, and I'm really proud of him, and I, I'm so happy to be a part of that and just to get to go share in some of that fun stuff with them. You know, you guys well know I'm I'm here in this great big house all by myself. Well, I got the two cats. Apollo, the black and white tuxedo, he's been my buddy. He's actually starting to let me touch him without, you know, going berserk cuz he's real they're both really feral. They're 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 just like wild. So they're not lap cats. He's actually been letting me touch him lately, which is a huge breakthrough because he's we've had him for like 15 years and he's trusting me enough now. That, I mean, he won't tolerate a whole lot of petting or anything, but I can, you know, stroke my hand down his back and he tolerates that. So <laughs> the other one, the female Gracie, she hides up there in the loft and uh, I, I never see her. Uh, she comes down once in a while. Um, but, you know, and I'll see her like running up and down the stairs going somewhere. But she's, she doesn't like to be in the same room as me. But Apollo, he's been my little buddy. Now, some of you guys have said, hey, it's you, you should get a dog. And uh, I, have, I have to disagree. I've had my share of dogs. I, I've had dogs all my life. In fact, I raised wolf dogs here uh, back in the 90s. And uh, they were great animals. I mean, you know, anybody knows you got a dog, it's your best friend, it's your companion, it's so much love and affection with a pet. But for me here, yeah, that would give me that, that, uh, uh, fill some of that void, I guess, of being lonely, but I just don't want to take on the responsibility of having a dog here. Um, you know, I don't want to have to worry about letting it out to use the bathroom or, or having it, you know, chew up furniture or whatever. Uh, you know, what am I going to do with it when I leave? Do I tie it up outside? Do I lock it in the bathroom or yeah, you know, and, and what if I want to travel? What do I do with it then? I, I could board it somewhere. That, that's a lot of money. A uh, pet sitter wouldn't work because she only comes for like an hour every day, and when the dog would be stuck here the rest of the time all by itself and probably have emotional damage by the time I came home. Not to well, they say, well, I wouldn't take it with you. Well, I'm not. I'm not riding a, the the dog on a motorcycle. That's another thing. I know some people take their dogs on a motorcycle. No, I'm, I'm not doing that. And as far as travel, uh, my travel plans are going to involve some flight, you know, where I get on a jet and fly. I, I'm going to fly, probably fly into Vegas and then rent a car and drive on through Death Valley and go visit my brother in Lone Pine, California and spend some time there. But see, I, I 
what am I going to do with a the dog then? I can't take dog with me. Um, to, I could drive all that way with a dog. Yes, I could. But uh, no, I, I don't. I just don't want want to. I don't. I don't want to start that. Now, of course, if I had a female in the house, she would mu most likely twist my arm and convince me that can we please, 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 please go to the go to the dog shelter and pick out a puppy. And I would probably fall to her uh, plea and say, yes, dear, we can go get a dog. But I don't have a woman in the house, so the answer is no, not going to do it. Uh, not going there again. Been there, done that, and I, I don't want to get started with that again. And uh, <laughs> am I looking for a wife or a girlfriend? No, no, but... You know, if she happens to come, drop out of the sky and fall into my graces and uh, she's the perfect woman, okay, you know, we can do that. But uh, in the meantime, I'm just uh, hanging out here by myself. And like I said before, no, the, the computer-generated uh, uh, artificial intelligence doesn't come close to a real person that doesn't work so uh <laughs> oh well hey guys well i appreciate you watching my uh, video today and thanks for the help with the bike too i mean a couple of you guys have said check the check the wire on the points make sure it's not grounded out <clears throat> that's the first thing i looked at because that's kind of what i suspected that i had that hooked up wrong uh, if I had better eyesight, things would go a little easier, but I'm pretty near blind most of the time for looking up close things. So, yeah, that was a huge help, and, and I was able to, you know, get a close look at that and see, yep, it is in the wrong spot. Fixed it. Hopefully that thing should be running pretty soon. Well, if you like my video, give me the thumbs up thing. And uh, if you haven't yet, go ahead and subscribe for me. Hit that red subscribe button. And, you know, that way every week you'll see my videos pop up on your feed. Thanks for joining me. Until next time, cats, ride hard and die free.